Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our evening service. You are all very, very welcome this evening. We're going to start a service by singing hymn 503. There is within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still. In of all of life's ebb and flow. We'll stand to sing.
Praise God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. We're going to come before the throne of grace and uh, remembering those that are sick and pray for them again today that God will uh, be with them. We pray for Darren McElveen and Brother Wesley as well. And we continue to pray for Cecil McKendry. Christina very much needs the Lord and Margaret Wright. And uh, we do pray for David Loudon. Edna Scott and Beatrice McGarry. Patsy Dockery. Patsy really needs the Lord at this time too. And uh, she just needs a real touch from God. And we do pray very much for Patsy. We pray for Alec Robinson and Dave Borland and Sam Bloomfield. Elizabeth McAreevy and Peter Moy and Joanne Peden. 
and Philip Archibald and his family. We pray for Albert McCooks, who's still in the Royal Victoria Hospital, and we continue to pray. He is making good progress, and we just praise God for that now. Uh, we pray for Ray Laverty, that the Lord will be with him. Hazel, Martin Moore, and Alison McClellan, Bobby Todd and Bobby Archibald, Joan Hunter, and remember uh, Ellen Morris too, and Robert Hunter, uh, David McKendry, and uh, we do pray for Philip Doak and Gillian's mother. Uh, Jean Montgomery too needs the Lord, and we pray for Siobhan and Shirley's dad uh, and, the, and a brother that the Lord will uh, be with them. Marion, Alex's uh, uh, neighbor, and we pray for Anne McCauley. Mary, Wade, uh, Mary Wade's daughter, uh, the Lord will be with her. Billy Smith, and we pray for Johnny McCurdy, Gwenny Stewart, and uh, we do pray for Moira too. Moira's having a bad old time with his vertigo, and she's up in Bangor, I think, at the moment with her daughter. So we do pray for Moira. Pray for uh, Stuart Boyd and uh, Joan Logan and Ivor Patterson, Ruth McAleese, and uh, of course we remember those that are bereaved and pray for them that God will be with them and undertake for them. Uh, we pray for the ministry of God's word, that God will bless his word to our hearts and our lives in the lovely name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Here's many, many needs, and we know God is well able to undertake for every one of them. Praise his lovely name. We're going to ask Sister Gillian if she would bring us before the Lord uh, tonight and uh, pray that God will indeed have his way in this meeting in a great way. Amen. We're delighted to see you all this evening, and we do give you a very warm welcome in the lovely name of Jesus. If you haven't had a copy of the newsletter, it's in the foyer there as you leave, so you can pick up a, a copy. We'd like to thank the a couple who uh, give the Mission 66 and the Sunday School a gift, and we appreciate that. At least they do appreciate it very much indeed. The newsletter is at hand if you'd like to have a copy of that, of course. And uh, the CD, if you'd like a CD, then you put it down uh, on the sheet at the back. 50p box is there, and uh, we appreciate those who contribute to it. Looking forward to, sorry, before we go any further, uh, you're invited to a night of fun and fellowship uh, to a table quiz on Friday the 20th, that's next Friday evening, at um, 7 o'clock. Adults 5 pounds and children aged uh, 7 to 12 uh, are 3 pounds. Light supper will be provided. Fun, uh, funds will go towards the Sunday school. So do remember that that's this Friday evening 
at 7 o'clock. Come along and uh, enjoy a lovely time of fellowship. Wednesday, the o'clock, is our prayer meeting. We're looking forward to another great time around the throne of grace. Come along and join with us Wednesday. The next Sunday morning at 11.30 is our break in the bread service and Sunday school. And uh, then next Sunday evening is our evangelistic service at 6.30. And we're looking forward to those services. You pray very much about it and pray that God will bless us uh, week after week after week. Praise his lovely name. I think those are all the announcements uh, that we uh, have to give. We're going to turn now uh, to the word of God. <clears throat> We're going to turn with the, uh, to Second Samuel, Second Book of Samuel, Chapter Twelve. Second Book of Samuel, Chapter Twelve, and we'll commence reading at verse number nine. Second Samuel 12, verse 9. Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in the sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thine own house and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbors and they shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. And for thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord has also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it, before, uh, because by this deed thou shalt give great occasion uh, to the enemy of the Lord to blaspheme, and the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And we know that God will bless to us the reading of his precious, precious word. The title of my message tonight is Be Sure That Your Sins Will Find You Out. There's a verse in the Old Testament in Numbers uh, chapter 32 and verse 23, and it says, And be sure your sin will find you out. That's not a threat. That's not even a promise. That's just a statement of fact. We have looked at David's sin with Bathsheba, we have watched uh, that sin evolved, evolved from the moment it was conceived until it was committed. And then we have watched as we have, as the, we have watched as that sin was confronted and also confessed. I want this evening to dig into that area a little deeper. Because we are living in very evil days, dreadful days. Awful things are happening. And it's very easy to get caught up in its sin today. I want to show you that what we can expect when we allow sin to flourish in our lives. There are consequences and there are, they are very unpleasant consequences as well. Let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 18 and learn what to expect when we sin against God. In this dark episode 
or epistle of, of David discovered a spiritual principle that holds true in every person's life here this evening. Here is the principle. God always, instantly, and completely forgives sin when there is confession and genuine repentance. But only then. But he does not remove the consequences of our sin. He forgives us when we repent, but the consequences of sin he does not remove. God gave David's sin in Second Samuel. God forgave David's sin, and that's grace. That's the grace of God. But David still had to face the consequences of his action, and that is reality. Contrast, the Lord hath put away thy sin, and the sword shall never depart from thy house. The principle I mentioned a few minutes ago is clearly demonstrated in the lives of the characters of the Bible. Adam, for instance, Moses, Abraham. Abraham, he brought Hagar out of Egypt and paid a terrible, terrible price. Jacob tricked his brother and his father and then met Laban, who tricked him. Achan, he stole money and a garment and paid a terrible price for it. And David, he knew uh, what he did and something of the price that he paid. This principle is also clearly declared in Genesis chapter, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. These verses teach us to follow two truths. You always reap exactly what you sow. You always reap more than what you sow. And this is not written uh, uh, to the Old Testament people. This is written to New Testament believers. Repentance does not stop the harvest. If you sow, you will also reap it. That's a fact. Yes, God gives grace. He gives grace. But this grace means that uh, we do not die for our sins. As, as the Nathan the prophet told David. That is what Nathan said in verse 13. You're not going to die. Grace means that we will have God's help to face the consequences of our sin. We cannot sin against God and then ask for forgiveness and then do the same thing tomorrow and expect forgiveness again and again and again. God's grace never means what, that, we off, that we are off the hook. Never, ever. Where sin is sown, a bitter harvest will always be reaped. One of the problems in dealing with sin is the fact that we learn long before we encounter. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we do not have, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word is not in us. <clears throat> we learn that God will forgive us for our sins before we ever learn that we do not have to commit the sin in the first place. We can avoid that sin. We can turn our backs upon that sin. As a result, we are trained and programmed to sin. 
we think that we can do it, confess it, and walk away from it. Well, that's dead wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember this principle. God always, instantly, and completely forgives sin, but only when it is confessed with genuine repentance. Only. But he does not remove the consequences of our sin. I want you to remember that. That there are always consequences and nobody knew it better than David did. He paid heavy consequences for his sin. My advice is that we all learn it, memorize it, remember it, and live by it from this moment onwards. When David sinned with Bathsheba and attempted to cover the sin by having Uriah, her husband, killed. He unleashed a series of tragedy in his own life and his own family that would destroy him. Things would never, ever be the same in David's life or home as a result of the things that he did. These are the consequences. Let me give you a brief uh, overview of, of the pain David endured for a moment of pleasure and enjoyment. David suffered the death of an, instance of an infant son. David's eldest son, Amon, Amon uh, raped his half-sister, Tamar. David's son, Absalom, Absalom uh, grew to hate Ammon. <coughs> Absalom conspired to have Ammon killed. Absalom fle f flees from his father, and his two and the two are in, 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 uh, enraged for some five years. Absalom leads a public rebellion against David. Absalom is murdered by David's nephew in Job chapter one, we say. This is a tragic, tragic description of the horrible effects that sin can have in our lives. David, you know, I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've heard people saying so often, oh, well, David got away with it. Uh, David sinned, but God forgive him. And that's true, God did forgive him. But my goodness, the, the consequences of that sin are dreadful. This is a stage, um, a, 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 this is a tragedy description, a tragic description of the horrible effects that can, sin can have in our life. David's sin affects the whole family more than it did anyone else. After all, uh, when the smoke is cleared and his four sons were dead, a kingdom of shambles, Disgraced wives, a tarnished reputation, a disgraced daughter, and a trusted counselor dead by suicide. Among all other things, even though it was David who sinned, his sin did impact the people who were totally innocent. And that's sad. His family suffered because of his sin. That infant child of Tamar were both innocent victims of David's wickedness. But it also affected David. It tarnished his name. It tarnished his reputation. It caused him instant grief and heartache. We read that in Psalm 55. Have you thought about what could happen in your life because of your sin? Have you thought of uh, uh, what the fallout would be if you fell into sin? Have you considered what might happen uh, and what lives might be ruined because of your sin? If you um, uh, took that fatal step and went away from the Lord into sin, are you willing to pay the high price? Are you? 
You never know who might be destroyed because of an indiscretion in your life. Don't think for a moment that your sin won't affect the innocent people around you, because it will. Don't think for a moment that uh, you, you can do as you please and, and uh, no effect with it. You are deceiving yourself if you think like that or if you believe that. May the Lord help us all to count the cost and, and to stay close to him and to walk with him and to do that which is right and well-pleasing in the sight of God. Oh, may the Lord help us all to count the cost this, more, this evening. Even as this time unfolds in, in, in David's life, we can see in, in, in his life the evidence of God's hand at work. Even though David had to face the consequences of his sin, he still was God's man. Isn't God so gracious and loving and kind? And God was at work in his heart. Yes, David paid an awful high price, but he also came out of the dark days uh, uh, with a changed heart, rest restoration, and humility. His face, he faced his sin like a man, and God gave him grace to make it through the consequences that he had to. His heart must have been sore. His heart was broken because of all the people that he lost in his life and because of the consequence, he knew that it was because of him all these people died. If there was one glimmer of light in this dark tragedy, it is that in the fact that God brought David through it, everything, and restored him to the throne again. God was good to him. You and I would have said, well, my friend, you will never be anything. You will never, ever uh, be in a high position again. But God forgive him and restored him to the throne. If God did it for David, he will do it for you. God will never desert you. But let me tell you that this doesn't give you license to sin. It doesn't give you license to do whatever you like and know that God will forgive you. Not at all. In fact, it's the very opposite effect it should have on us. He will go with you even as you face the consequences of your rebellion against him. He will give you grace uh, to, to, to get you through the pain and the heartache of your sin. That's the God that we serve. That's the, the, the God that we love so much because he is so merciful and so loving and so kind. Don't you want to know him tonight? Don't you want to know him personally tonight? Because he's such a wonderful savior, he will give you grace to overcome and he will be standing there to receive you when you come to yourself. Like the, 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 uh, the prodigal son's father even though the son had done awful things and had walked away from the father, yet the father was standing there day after day after day with his open arms waiting to receive him when he would come home. I wish I could tell you that when you get, get saved, you will never feel. You'll never feel God again. But that's not true. We all know that it would be a lie if I did tell you something like that. Because we all will fail. However, I can promise you this, that when you do fail, God will help us through the process of confession, repentance, and restoration. God is always there. What a friend we have in Jesus he will even keep you through the, the dreadful consequences sin brings into your life. 
That is the promise of grace. That is the promise of our heavenly potter. Let me say this. It does not take much sin to leave an eternal mark in your life or your family or your community or your nation. David learned this harsh lesson. Some of you have learned it as well. Some of you perhaps have come through things like this, situations like this. Some are in the process of seeing their chickens come home to roost. While sin always carries a great price tag, it does not have to be as bad as it could be. If there is an unconscious, uh, unconfessed sin in your life, I challenge you to bring it to Jesus. I challenge you this evening to confess it, repent of it, and pray for grace to face the consequences. And God is there to help you through them. If you are uh, reaping a better harvest today, uh, why not come before the Lord and, su and submit uh, to what he is doing in your life? If things are right between you and the Lord, I would encourage you to come before him and to ask him for the help in avoiding the horrors of sin. If you see someone skating uh, too close to the edge, invite them and bring them to the Lord. These are days when we're living in the last of the last days, I believe, and these are days not for sitting back and, and our oars and, and just enjoying what we have, but we should tell others about the wonderful saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we should pray that they will be delivered, that people will be delivered from their sins before they occur a high, high price. If you were lost, I invite you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and Master tonight because the Lord is willing to, to receive you no matter what you have done, no matter how difficult a life, no matter how bad or how deep down in, <coughs> in sin you have been. The Lord is willing to receive you. My goodness, when we look across our congregation and see those that have been down in the very gutter of sin and the Lord has lifted them up and here they are tonight, sinners saved by the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and heaven bound. If he did it for them, if he did it for Paul the Apostle, he can also do it for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever, that's you and me, Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Don't you want everlasting life? Don't you want this peace? You see, there's no peace in this old world that we're living in today. But there's peace in Jesus Christ. We can have, you can have, that lovely, sweet, abiding peace. You can go out of this meeting redeemed and set gloriously and wonderfully free. If you will repent of your sins... And ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life. You'll go out of this meeting, saved by his wonderful grace. Shall we pray? <clears throat> our gracious God and our loving Father in heaven, we thank you again, Lord, for the precious word of God. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful Savior for a wonderful God. How you have lifted us out of the gutter of sin. How you have planted our feet upon a rock, established our goings, put a new song in our mouth, even praise unto our God. You've done all these things, Lord, and much more. Father, we thank you for your mercy, your love, and your grace. Father, it could never be compared with anything else. And I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts tonight for all that you have done. And if Jesus tarries for all that you're going to do, 
for each one of us. And we thank you, Lord, that you said in your word, I've gone on to prepare a place for you. And if I've gone on to prepare a place for you, I've got, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, you may be also. We're going home. You have a place reserved for us. And we're going home to be with the Lord. Father, if there's one in our meeting tonight and they haven't that blessed assurance, and Father, we pray before they leave this meeting tonight that God, that they will turn to thee and accept thee as their Savior and Lord and Master. Bless every head bowed in your presence here tonight. We thank you, God, for those that have been faithful to the house of the Lord and faithful to the word of God. And Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless them. We remember the sick and sorrowful. And we pray for those tonight. That God, that those that are missing the service through sickness tonight, God, we pray that you will touch them and heal them in the precious name of Jesus. We ask these things for Christ's sake. Amen. We're going to sing a closing hymn together. I want, dear Lord, a heart that's true and clean, a sunlit heart with not a cloud between, a heart like thine, a heart divine, heart as white as snow. Let's sing together. Stand. <laughs> you.